Joey? We're awaiting the start of the second game here, actually the third game, but the second game we're going to bring you. This is Bark Holmes TV versus the Plattsburgh Air Force Base. And our play-by-play -play man tonight is the our original play-by-play -play man from back in 1983. Mad Dog Castiner, as we knew him then, Madwin Dog Schneider. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to be back. And welcome to another exciting night from the Gentlemen's Slow Pitch League in Plattsburgh, New York. This quarterfinal matchup between Barcombe's TV and Furniture and Plattsburgh Air Force Base. Working the game tonight is the officials at home plate, Jim McKinley, the field umpire, the colorful and the dapper Al Rose. I've never heard Al Rose referred to as dapper before, but I'm He's sure he'll. Dapper fella. I'm sure he'll go along with that. Leading off for the Air Force base will be their left center fielder, Chili Polehill. We'll set the Barcombe's defense. Behind the plate, Tracy Bullris doing the catching, and the pitcher, Dean Lombard. First pitch to Poe Hill, ripped up the middle, knocked down by Lombard over the first for the out. Dean Lombard, an excellent defensive pitcher, starts the game off. One to three, and we've got one down in the top of the first. Now hitting for the Air Force base, number nine, their pitcher, John Evans. John Evans, by the way, got the save in the first annual Gentlemen's Slow Pitch League West Plattsburgh League All-Star Game held the 2nd of August at the West Plattsburgh Legion Field. John finished up the ball game, won by the Gentlemen All-Stars. Lombard's pitch is deep. Rest of that Barcombe's defense in the infield, third baseman Rob McDonough, the shortstop Dale Hawksby. Evans goes to right field, drops in for a base hit. Right fielder Bill Bashard gets it in over the cutoff's head. Rob McDonough backs up the play, pulls Evans to a single. The rest of that Barcombe's infield, Denny Laporte mans the bag at first, Todd Underwood the second baseman. And in the outfield, the left fielder Jim Barcombe, left center fielder Randy Barcombe, Tim Gowitz in right center field, and the Barcombe's manager Bill Bashard in right field. The hitter for the Air Force base, the shortstop, Corky Yarbo. He hits the ball to Hawksby. Over to Underwood for one, over to first. Not in time. They got the force at second. So the Air Force base will have a runner on first with two outs. That'll bring to the plate their left fielder, Terry Woolover. This guy's a good hitter, Calvin. Excellent hitter. Eight for nine in the season against Beaumont Lanes. Home run down at OLVA field. Excellent hitter. It's a ball to Hawksby. Goes over to Underwood for the out. So they leave one runner stranded. And after a half inning of play, there's no scorer between the Air Force base and Barcombe's TV and furniture. All right, we're in the bottom of the first inning on a cool, brisk autumn evening in Plattsburgh, New York. Leading off for Barcombe's TV will be their shortstop, Dale Hawksby. He'll be followed by the right fielder, Bill Bashard. Left center fielder, Randy Barcombe, will be the third hitter in the inning. We'll set that Air Force base defense pitching. It'll be John Evans. Joel Amarca does the catching. Shortstop is Corky Yarbo. Steve Wyatt mans third base. Second baseman is Al Rudder. And Bill Duckett is the first baseman. Evans pitches a ball. We'll set that outfield in a second. Comes back with a strike and evens up the count at one and one. Gets behind two and one. Terry Wolliver is the left fielder. And left center field, Chili Pohill. Charlie Powell's in right center field. As Hawksby draws a walk. Jay Purvis is the right fielder. Now well, Hawksby draws a leadoff walk. He's at first with nobody out. And Bill Bashard, the right fielder, steps to the plate. Evans deals, deals a ball. 
John Evans, a little control problem here this evening. Maybe it's the presence of the camera. <laughs> no, it seems to bother Monk. Good thing you stayed in the car yesterday, Calvin. I'll tell you that. Well, between Mo and uh, Jackie Hoff, of course, Mo got upset with me, but Jackie Hoff, we saw her lose a pile of games between the PJs and uh, City Plaza. Evans battled back for the strike. That was beautiful weather at that Altona tournament in Scioto over the weekend, dog. Yeah, it was a great time in Scioto. That's the norm. Bill Bashard rips a base hit to left field. Wolover gets the ball in. So we got nobody down in the bottom of the first inning. Dale Hawksby's at second, Bill Bashard's at first. That'll bring to the plate the left center fielder, Randy Barcom. The on deck hitter, the first baseman, the big guy from Coopersville, Denny Laporte. Is there a resemblance? I know they call Denny the fridge this season. Is there a resemblance to uh, William Perry? Randy Barcom, deep ball, left field, Wolover back, he makes the catch. Runners tag, Wolover throw, off the bag at third. Both runners move up. So Randy Barcom with a deep fly to left field moves both runners up. That'll bring their power hitter to the plate, the first baseman, Denny Laporte. Denny's got five balls out of the park this season. There's one away, first base is open. Evans pitch, he throws him a strike. Second, that's a ball. Evens the count up at one ball and one strike. Laporte is one of several second generation families here to be playing on his bark home team. That's deep. Left center fielder, pull hill back, makes the catch. Danny Laporte drove it to the fence. Bullhill out there, he caught that ball about three inches off the ground. I don't know if he misjudged it or he just likes making that type of play. No, I think he likes making that type of play. I've seen him in earlier games. Yeah. A little bit of mustard maybe <laughs> on that ball. <laughs> well, since he's buying a tape from me, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna expound I'm not gonna on that. Expound on that mustard. Well, you better wait till the result of the game. Maybe you won't want to buy a tape. <laughs> I know I tried to buy a tape from you last week. Offered you two thousand dollars for it, and you wouldn't sell it. You're talking about that eighteen I'm to three about fiasco. The, I'm talking about the doubleheader loss there in uh, one evening. Oh, the uh, City Plaza fiasco. <laughs> I got two down. There's one run in already. Bill Bashard's at third. He wants to score, and Dean Lombard is the man at the plate. This ball four. So we got runners on the corners with two outs. And up to the plate, the right center fielder, Tim Gowett. We just got done watching Gowett play for the Patriots two team. That was the final up there. Seven to two was the score. Jeez. That'll be game five on Wednesday. That'll decide. It's coming they're not playing tomorrow night. I don't know. It was the Dragoons that didn't want to play. Patriots were ready to play on Tuesday. A little bit of a head game going on there or what? I don't know. I really don't know. I know with the weather threatening to get kind of wet later in the week, I think I would try to get that game in if possible, but must have been some kind of problem there. Lack of ball players, I'd imagine. Both teams want to be at full strength in the last game of the finals. Go ahead, hits it hard to right field. The right fielder over and makes a catch for the third out of the inning. So after one complete inning of play, Barcombe's TV breaks out in front, one to nothing over the Plattsburgh Air Force Base. I'll take a moment and uh, explain about that second generation. Most of these guys have performed in the Lake Champlain League. Tony Musso is the son of Ray Musso, formerly played for the Knights of Columbus team. Earlier, Maislin brothers. The Barcombe's brothers out there, Randy and Jim, their father, Frenchy, played for a long time with the Knights of Columbus and later on with his own Barcombe's team. And of course, there's Denny Laporte, whose father, Merrill, played also 
If I'm not mistaken, uh, Merrill Laporte won an MVP award one year as a catcher. He wasn't the MVP. He won the batting title. I think he might have won it. He might have won it one year. Uh, you know, one year we had a had a batting title. He won the batting title, and Andy Morelli won the MVP award. I'm not sure if Laporte might have won it later on at some time. But the year I'm thinking of, he won the, the batting crown. We had both scorekeepers double check with each other all through the season, every game. It turned out to be a lot of work, but it was nice for that one year to have a batting champ, a home run champ, and an RBI champ. Who's the home run champ that season? They're testing my memory, and I really don't remember. Okay, leading off, top of the second inning. Yeah! Oh, nice play by Lombard. Bill Durkett, Duckett, excuse me, let off the inning. Hit a line drive back to Dean Lombard. That's not the place hit a line drive. Now, oh, Dean, a good defensive pitcher. Yes, he is. Pitcher. Okay, hitting for the Air Force base will be their third baseman, Steve Wyatt. Danny, let's get him up out there. A lot of game. Let's go. As Barcombe's. Calvin, this is nothing new right here. Uh, I've been handed a, a, a wrong <laughs> scorebook. Joe Trombley is listed as a third baseman. Well, Bill Bishop came over Rob and corrected McDonough. that after I gave you that. He told me that. Uh, Joey the DH tonight or EH? He's the extra hitter, yes. Well, whatever he is, he's trying to cheer his team on. Lombard deals to Wyatt. He's behind in the count, three balls and one strike. Wyatt hits the ball to left center field. Randy Barco meets it up for the second out of the inning. I have to admit that I'm one of the people who was surprised with the success that this Barcombs team has had in the Gentlemen's League. What they finished with a 25 and 5 record, was it? Yes, they had an excellent season. As Larry Cooney, the EH of the Air Force base, steps in, yeah, they were 25 and 5 and uh, won their division going away. Won it quite handily. Of course, everybody knew the Beaumont team was going to do well, but. Uh, to know that the Barcombs Club would also do almost as well. The Beaumont, as I recall, was 26 and four, and the Barcombs team 25 and five, but in different divisions. Cooney goes to right field. Bill Bashard makes the easy catch. Third out of the inning. So after an inning and a half, it still remains Barcombs TV one, the Air Force Base nothing. Okay, we're going into the bottom of the second inning here. Barcombs up one to nothing. Their left fielder Jim Barcombs going to lead off. He'll be followed by Todd Underwood. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, seeing that we've got a falsified scorebook, I think Rob McDonough is following him. I think McDonough went to the bottom of the lineup and Trombley will bat in the same spot. Although he's the EH and not uh, playing in the field. Arkholm, the Wolover. Wolover over to first for the out. Nice hustle by the catcher for the Air Force base, Joel Lamarca. Got down that line real fast. In fact, he was stride for stride with the with the hitter. Well, base is empty and one down, and second baseman Todd Underwood to the plate. You like to see that kind of hustle in a catcher, but every once in a while yes. it pays off. Saw that hustle all night tonight uh, in the early game. Bull Martin, Big Brother, Dick Stata had a whale of a ball game. Got a couple of big hits, followed every runner down. The old walleyes having a good year. What was the, the score in that game? 15 to three. It was a pretty tight game. Uh, five to two in the sixth inning. The wood down to Wyatt at third base. Wyatt over to first, and he gets the out. So I got two quick outs in the inning. And the elected hitter, or the extra hitter, or in some leagues the designated hitter, Joey Trombley, steps to the plate. In the City Women's League, they have an elected hitter and also a designated hitter. They have both. I noticed that. Uh, that's a way to get 12 people in the ball game. Yes, it is. Uh, as manager of Beaumont Lanes, I'm a proponent of that rule. That's a mighty big word for you to use. What does that mean, proponent? It means that if I had 15 ball players every game and I could get 12 of them into the game, charging each a dollar for the umpires, I'd make... Let's see, three dollars a game. So I propone it <laughs> to make money. 
You pay nine dollars for your umpires? Is that what you're paying, or what? No, eleven in the regular season, twelve as Joey Trombley hits a fly ball to right field. So quickly, one, two, three again. And after two full innings, Bark Holmes continues to hold on to the one nothing lead. Hey, leading off for the Air Force base, the right fielder Jay Purvis. He hits a ball to Tim Gowett in right center field. Goes over, makes a nice catch on the ball. Wasn't an extremely difficult catch, but he made a nice catch on it. Now the right center fielder Charlie Powell moves in. The on deck hitter will be the second baseman Al Rudder. Not a very big crowd here this evening. I think the weather probably keeping people away. A little cool. It's in the only the quarterfinals. Whoa, he hits a ball. Gowett goes back, makes a nice catch on that. Charlie Powell goes deep to right center field. So with two was, outs. Catch was probably a little bit nicer than it should have been. He probably yeah, I think he might have misplayed that ball. Got a poor jump on it and didn't read it right off the bat. Second baseman Al Rudder moves in. Nobody on. Two down. From the top of the third inning. If they don't score too many runs, though, Calvin, it'd uh, be a plus for us, the way we keep score. <laughs> well, we can each count to 10 before we take our shoes off, so we'll be all set there if they don't score more than that. Oh, Todd Underwood over to Lump. Laporte for the third out. So after two and a half, the score still remains. Barcombe's one in the Plattsburgh Air Force Base, zero. Okay, we're in the bottom of the third inning. It's one to nothing, Barcombe's. Leading off for Barcombe's will be their catcher, Tracy Bullris. He'll be followed by the third baseman, Rob McDonough. And hitting third in the inning will be the dandy of a shortstop, Dale Hawksby. <laughs> Evans' pitch is a strike. Now that first game down on OVA field, that ball would have been called uh, illegal. They'd have called that too high. They didn't let any art get thrown here early tonight. Boris goes deep to left center field. Chili Pohill under the ball. He went back on the ball real quick. Looked like he'd got burned early. He went back. And nice grab. Still a one-handed grab out there. Yeah. Going to catch up with him. Nobody on and one away in the third baseman, Rob McDonough, to the plate. Is that a Boston Bruins cap he's wearing, or what is that? Eh? That's a Red Sox uh, Red cap. Sox. Well, you know the McDonough clan is... Uh, Staunch Boston Red Sox supporters. What's that song? Uh, He's better than his brother Joe. Dominic DiMaggio, is that the one? There's nobody better than his brother Joe. Dominic DiMaggio. That's for you, Pat. <laughs> I can sing that one a lot better than that wild Irish rose you wanted me to sing. Oh, he comes back with a strike. Evens count up at two and two. McDonough hits a ball in the air to left center field. Pohill under the ball and makes his first two-handed catch of the evening. Like to break it up a little bit, a little variety. Nobody on and two outs. The shortstop Dale Hawksby. Hawksby let off the game with a walk and uh, scored the. Five, Only run of the ball game to this point. Call that illegal. I don't let much art get thrown down here. What is the uh, rule on it? Well, that's three to ten. Hawksby with good speed, but they make a nice play. Over to first base, Wyatt. 
over to first, and they catch the speedy Dale Hawksby. Oh, after three complete innings of play, that score still remains one to nothing. Uh, three to ten from the point of release. Or from the ground. I talked to uh, one umpire here, and uh, he says it's from the ground. Another one uh, tells me it's from the point of release. Don't they issue bylaws in this league, or, or you are a future league champion uh, manager, and you don't know the bylaws? To tell you the truth, uh, the bylaws aren't issued uh, per se as these Barcombs and Bullmart are used to seeing them. They don't give you the whole list. They don't get to you. They just no, they don't. I'm serious. Them. Okay. Well, we have found that it is, uh, this league's well run. Ray Dubuque's an excellent league president. And uh, Dick Perry, is a, he does the scheduling and uh, he takes care of the financial aspect of it. And both men do a very uh, credible job running the league. And Mr. L rules the head umpire and also the umpire assigner. Come on, Come on now. Keep up here. Let's go. And uh, all three do a real good job. But it would be handy to have the bylaws. Okay, leading off from the top of the fourth inning would be the catcher, Joel LaMarca. It's a ground ball to Lombard. Over to Laporte. One to three for the easy out. That'll bring the leadoff hitter to the plate, Chili Pohill. Not many hits in the ball game tonight, Calvin. A pitching duel. Let's call an illegal pitch. So Lombard falls behind. He shows his displeasure on the mound. Battles back with a strike. Oh, Hill. Right center field, Gowett makes the catch. So, we're in the fourth inning and nobody on. Two down and the pitcher, John Evans, to the plate. Lombard deals a strike to Evans. Gets ahead on the count, 0-1. Goes back with a short pitch, and the count evens up at one ball and one strike. And he gets a foul ball out of play. Gets behind in the count, 1-2. and two. Now he's got to be careful he doesn't foul the next one off, because if he does, he's going to be going out to pitch, because he's going to be out. ASA rule, third strike foul, and you're out. Comes back deep, evens the count up at two and two. Still Lombard with the advantage. Evans, maybe trouble. Bill Bashard comes hard and makes a nice catch. Makes a nice catch out there in right field. He came hard. Up to five. Right here, right here, Los Angeles Lakers styles caught up to the North Country. Joe Trombley and Tim Gowett with a low five. How low can you go? A little bit of Byron Scott and Michael Cooper. Tell those guys watch some NBA. The low five has invaded North Country softball. Okay, leading off the bottom of the fourth inning in a one nothing game that Barcombe leads. Be the right fielder who just made a fine defensive play, Bill Bashard. He also doubles his team manager. Go, buddy. Go rip the ball. Go rip the ball. Come on, Billy. Evans battles back. Count goes to two balls and one strike. Come on, 
Goes to left center field. Chili Pole, he'll under the ball, makes a catch. Continues to be a low scoring game. Ball's not carrying. Maybe the weather. Don't wait. Come on, boys. You've had a season of that uh, foul ball on the third strike being an out under your belt. Uh, do you like the rule? Or yes, I like the rule. Speeds up the game. It's a good rule. Guys get to hit slow pitch softball. That may be in the gap. Bow Hill over. He cuts the ball off. Randy Barcombe rounds first to get the throw in. They hold him to a single. Hit the ball hard in the left center field. That'll bring their home run threat to the plate. First baseman, Denny Laporte. Every time I see Gary Dragoon foul off about 15 pitches in a yeah, down in here, bat. He'd have to learn how to uh, go to work a little earlier in the count. It's a ball in the gap. Oh, and it's by the right center fielder all the way to the fence. Pull hill over. Barcombe scores. Laporte motivates in the third base. Good rip out there. I think the right center fielder, if he'd have played that into a single, would have been much better off. Yeah, he shouldn't have tried for that. He should have seen he wasn't going to get it on the fly. So there's one away. Laporte's on third. And the pitcher, Dean Lombard, is coming up. Mark Holmes leads two to nothing. And they threaten here with a third run. If they can get Laporte in from third. Lamarca is questioning the call there behind the plate. <laughs> A little bit longer, and he'll be questioning it from the parking lot. Well, he picked that ball up in a hurry if you want the umpire to see. It was supposed to be First baseman over, makes a nice catch. Laporte tags, comes to the plate. They get it. They don't get him. He's safe. Then Laporte scores. Infield pop up to the first baseman. Come on, let's go. Without looking at a replay on it, I think it was a good call. The tag yes, it was a little bit call. high. It was a good call. He got under that tag. I think the ball was there in time. Just the tag was high. I So Barcombs, they get two runs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. They build their lead to three to nothing. It's a right center fielder, Tim Gowett. It's a base hit. Two right center field. They get it in and hold them to a single. Right center fielder, Charlie Powell's had some business this inning. He's been quite busy. Two outs and a runner on first. Barcombs up three to nothing. And Jim Barcombe, the left fielder, steps in. Evans gets behind with the ball. Evans comes back with a strike. Gets back in the count at two and one. It's a fly ball to left field. Left fielder makes the catch. So, in the bottom of the fourth inning, Barcombs comes up with two runs on the Randy Barcombs single and the Denny Laporte triple. Dean Lombard gets that third run in with a pop fly in the infield. Laporte tags up and scored. So after four complete innings of play, it's Barcombs TV and Furniture 3, Plattsburgh Air Force Base 0. Let me ask you a little something about that foul ball and the third strike thing. Does the fielder have the option of catching it? Uh, Doesn't have to catch it. I if know it's he, foul, the batter's out. Well, let's say, the uh, runner on third base cannot advance, or any runner can't advance. Even it's if he catches ball. it. It's dead. If he catches it, they can advance. Okay, so the best thing the fielder can do if it's a, foul if a man ball, on base is let it go. Let it drop. 
because they can't advance. Automatic uh, dead ball, the runners can't advance, but if he touches it, then all hell can break loose. Okay, leading off for the Air Force Base in the top of the fifth inning will be their shortstop, Corky Yarbo. He rips the ball up the middle for a base hit, so he leads off the fifth inning, Corky Yarbo with a single. And a couple hits away from having a rally here. It's one disadvantage, just feel, compared to the Bullmart, the press box. That's, that's what I was thinking earlier. That's right Bullmart now, we field. wouldn't be froze to death in the press box of the BM. Of course, you tried to electrocute me last year, but... Oh, it takes a bad hop. Wall over, gets a bad hop single. Yarbo's at second. Dale Hawksby had two written all over that one, but it hit something out there and bounded over his head. Nothing Hawksby could do on the play. So, we've got a runner on first and a runner on second with nobody out in the top of the fifth inning. And the first baseman, Bill Duckett, steps in. He lined right back to Lombard his last time up. And he does, he does it, it again. again. We may have a double play here. They got a double play. Dean Lombard gets a runner at first. Snaps that line drive and over to first. And that's bang, bang, one, two, double play. That leaves him with a runner at second. But two down. The third baseman, Steve Wyatt, hitting. That's a killer when a well hit ball is turned into a DP like that. You gotta get a base hit here to get back in the ball game. Randy Barcom goes back and makes a nice running catch for the third out of the inning. So they lead off with two singles, but they leave them there. The big double play by Dean Lombard. A nice running catch by Randy Barcom. Oh, we're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Barcom continues to lead three to nothing. Got that low five again. They missed it that time. I think it needs a little work. I haven't got it down yeah, to Pat well, yet. Get back to the NCAAs in the spring and give them a little NBA practice. They'll get it down, Pat. Maybe after they watch themselves on TV and you know, see what they're doing wrong, they might uh, improve on it. That almost equals the high five that uh, two years ago, Dan Trombley and Pete McMillan, after winning the championship of the Lake Champlain League, tried to give each other. and Dan Trombley missed Peter's hand and corked him right between the eyes. <laughs> That's probably why the low five came into existence. It was less dangerous. Safer. Yeah, much, much safer. I'm sure a couple of gentlemen like us, though, Calvin, uh, could execute a perfect 10 high five. We may even put a little twirl in it. What do you think? By the end of the season, we'll give the sports fans in the North Country something to cheer about. Last game of the year. That's what we'll do, Doug. What do you say, Connie? Let's go. Come on, Hopefully the last game of the year, Calvin, I won't be able to work that game. <laughs> of course, the last game of the women's league, uh, your sister wanted to give me a low five. <laughs> she always, she had a thing about cameramen from way back. Doesn't Remember. like them, huh? Nope. <laughs> Especially if those cameramen were filming a uh, game she was losing. There's something about losses that uh, causes people to do that. Well, they've caused their brother, Doug Castine, uh, to slip up now and then. Underwood, it's a lazy fly ball to left field. I've seen him act up in uh, games that he's won. That was just having fun, I think. Oh. Well, you should know. You know him a lot better than I do. Know the guy quite well. We're intimate friends. Yeah. 
I haven't seen him in a while, but I'm sure he's as handsome as ever. I Evans. Just, I just saw Mad Dog yesterday at the uh, Did you know? tournament. Yes. And I always said the dogs knew enough to come in out of the rain, but he oh, didn't yesterday. Did. <laughs> Nobody knew enough to come in out of the rain except me. I was sitting in my car, my portable television I don't know booth. If, uh, anybody realizes it or not, but there's a little bit of snow falling yesterday. Those things happen in Altona, not so much in Scioto. He hates up the middle. Joey Trombley with a base hit. One out. Joe Trombley rips the ball up the middle for a base hit. Tracy Bullris, the catcher, steps in. He's going to try to add to the Barkholm Street of nothing lead. Bullris hit it a ton his last time up. I've never seen him hit a ball that hard. Well, they say Tracy's had a pretty good year here. Uh, we haven't, both uh, Barkholms and Bullmar, we haven't watched each other too much. The schedule's kind of staggered. and find that one team's playing on one night and one the next. Bullris hits the ball. Right center fielder didn't see that ball. That man didn't see the ball until it was halfway through the infield. I think uh, he was out for stepping in front of the plate. So a two down a runner on first, third baseman Rob McDonough steps in. Evans he's, evens up the count. Jeez, could use a drink of water here. Tongue's getting all tied. Rob McDonough, he hits up. Oh, nice catch made by the left center fielder, Chili Polio. Made a nice running catch. He had the one hand that one. That's the only shot he had at that ball. After five complete innings, Barcombs continues to lead three. Zip over the Air Force Base. Now Barcombs had a first round bye because they finished first in their division. Who'd the Air Force beat to get in here? Uh, Air Force Base played uh, Dallas Tavern. Swept them two in a two out of three series. I believe they won the first game eight to six. And the second game I think was, uh, I can't be quoted on this, but I think they kind of like ran away with the second game. Dallas had a problem fielding a full team late in the season. Although two. Dallas Tavern uh, in the two games they've had against Barcombs in the regular season played Barcombs uh, real tough. That was uh, Barcombs had to come back from a big deficit in that second game. Won the game on a home run in the seventh inning by Denny Laporte. And the first meeting of the season, the big uh, catcher, manager of Dallas, Dave Smith, wrapped two balls out of the ballpark. And Barcombs had to rally in that game in the seventh inning to win. That catcher from Dallas, Dave Smith, if we can mention him for a second. He's one awesome individual. He works out with the weights and uh, he's a big guy and he can really hit him out of here. One evening he hit a line drive out of left field and ball never wavered. It's cleared the fence by about a foot. Frozen rope. Okay, leading off the sixth inning for the Air Force base is their EH, Larry Cooney. Cooney hits a ball to the right center fielder. Gowett, it's by him, by Randy Barcombe. Cooney motors all the way to second. He's going to try for a three. Here comes the throw into the cutoff. Well, actually, the throw went to the pitcher Lombard in the middle of the infield. So Larry Cooney, he starts the sixth inning up with a leadoff triple. That's why they got him e -H and he can hit. Yeah. Well hit ball. Gowett dove for it. He had little choice in that one. He wasn't going to catch up to it anyway. Well, the right center fielder comes in here to hit with uh, nobody out. Runner on third, Jay Purvis. Now, if you were Barcombs here, would you just forget about that man at third? Well, I forget about him. You got a three nothing lead in the sixth inning. Every once in a while, you'll see these teams worry about that man on third and not go for the out. They're usually back players. Hey, hey. 
Lombard uncharacteristically gets behind three balls and no strikes. He battles back with a strike to Purvis. Still behind three and one. Purvis, it's a fly ball left center fielder Randy Barco makes a catch. Throw to the plate. And Cooney scores the Air Force Base first run on the sacrifice fly by Jay Purvis. Barco got a lot on that throw considering yep. he was going to the opposite way on it. Got the turn and throw. And the right fielder steps in, Charlie Powell. He gets a base hit over the shortstop's head. Barcom holds the ball, brings it in, misses a cutoff, goes to Lombard. So the Air Force base there mounting a mini rally here. Another couple base hits away from being anything a major problem. They've scored one run in the inning. They've got a runner on first with one away. A two-run lead is far from safe in Slopitz. And the second baseman, Al Rudder. I'm talking about how this game has gone offensively. Not a lot of runs. Although in their Dallas series, uh, this Air Force base team sprayed the ball all over the field. And two weeks ago, Barcombs and their Bullmark uh, game, they sprayed the ball over the field like a can of Raid spraying a two-legged beetle. That's under Underwood's glove at second as Rudder gets a single to right field. Charlie Powell motivates all the way around a third base. So this mini rally is uh, turning into a major problem for Barcombs as the Air Force base trailing three to one with one out. Potential Al lead. Rudder's on first base, Charlie Powell's on third, and Joe Lamarca, the catcher, steps in. Potential lead run at the plate. Lombard starts him off with a strike. That was a good pitch, right to the back of the mat. Not much you can do with that pitch. That's an illegal pitch. The count evens up at one ball and one strike. That's two all written all over it. Lombard to Hawksby, and that's two, and they get out of the inning. Nice double play started by Dean Lombard to Dale Hawksby to Denny Laporte. One to six to three. The Air Force base, they leave one on. They score one. And after five and a half innings of play, Barcombs leads three to one. Well, we're in the bottom of the sixth sill inning, Calvin Castine. We're in Plattsburgh, New York. I knew and that. Mark Holmes, TV and Furniture, they lead the Air Force base three to one. <laughs> if the teams with the. <laughs> Let's get Dean Lombard here in one more time with that comment. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Man's still living in a dream world. <laughs> As the leadoff hitter, shortstop Dale Hawksby leads off. That's cute. The leadoff hitter should be a leadoff hitter. That's right. Hawksby rips the ball to left center fielder, Paul Hill. One handed stab, but he makes the catch. Kind of just pull that down like he's grabbing an apple. And that'll bring the right fielder, team manager Bill Bashard, to the plate. If the teams with the best record in each of these quarterfinal games win, what would be the matchups in the semifinals? If uh, the numbers, the higher number, the higher seeded teams continue on in the playoffs, it would be uh, Rigsby's. As Bill Bashard hits a fly ball to left field, as a number one seed, they would play the number four seed, Barcombe, Stevie and Furniture. The number two seed, Press Republican, would meet number three seed, Beaumont Lanes. And that's if the status quo remains and the 
Not that's the team. Really it's the team with the better record on the season. The better records. Wins, yes. se wins their series, yes. But there are upsets. Yes, uh, there was one here this evening. Yeah. Lucas. Uh, Lucas Body. Body. The Nine big win seven. over the Press Republican. Press came back nice in that game. They're down 9 0. But press has a lot of power. You play the press in this field, you better have a couple extra balls because they're going to hit some over that fence. And Rigsby's has some power also. Guys like Steve Chris, Jeff Rozelle, Glenn Fizette, Lonnie Cleland. Those guys can hit a ball out of the park. Go! Come on, Randy, Randy Barcombe to the third baseman. Wyatt comes over with a nice throw. Nice pick up by the first baseman. The defense. Nice, nice play by first baseman Bill Duckett. Could I mention, by the way, that uh, this evening Gary Bullris uh, pitched his first uh, win tonight. He, he pitched for Bullmark and uh, he got the win. Did a real good job. As Peter McMillan was unable to attend tonight's game. Also, Arthur Guerin and Jim Davison were absent from the lineup this evening. So a 15-3 win under those circumstances is something to be happy with. I noticed in the Press Republican today that they did a nice favor to the Bomar team, calling them yeah, the, the favorites. I don't know if it was a favor. <laughs> I wouldn't think it is. I would think that no. would uh, cause Fire the other teams some, uh, to gun right. for them. Well, miss, maybe Mr. Turnbull is uh, he wants, pulling a few strings. He wants to get his press team fired up, probably. Huh? Well, if he wants to get them fired up against BM, better first get them fired up against Lucas. <laughs> That happens, they sometimes look past. How did Lucas do during the regular season? But any idea what their record was? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, I would say right around the a little over 500, although they did, uh, they had a big win over Bullmark. Uh, gave uh, the Lanesmen their second loss of the season. Scored nine runs in the sixth and the seventh innings to come away with a 9 8 victory after having only one hit in the first five innings. Got some good ball players in that team. Gerald Smith. It's an excellent pitcher. Uh, Rick Strack, former Plattsburgh State what is it? hockey star. New York Ranger goaltender. Bob Davies, of course. We all know Bob uh, from the North Country. And Ray Hoxby from the North uh, Country. Ray Hoxby from the Moores area. Sam Lajway from uh, the Altona area. A northern uh, Nighthawk in both soccer and baseball. And the number one, well, I think he's the defending champion at Bluff Point, Tom Rayville, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this Saturday, he'll be in the uh, shootout with his former coach, Don Bainbridge, for the Bluff Point men's championship. Full Hill hits a ball to Hawksby. Dropped by Ooh. Denny Laporte at first base. That could be a uh, they open that door. A you crack in the, in the door that uh, may get kicked in here. That's the top of the order in the seventh inning. That's Chili Pullhill. He gets a break. He gets on. It's an E3. John Evans. John Evans, not only did he get the save in that all-star game in West Plattsburg, but he got an important base hit in the eighth inning. He hits a lazy fly ball to Bill Bashard out in right field. There's no tag. Bashard runs the ball back in and gets time. They'll bring their shortstop, Corky Yarbo, to the plate. Corky, the last inning, led off with a single. He was followed by a single by Terry Woolover. Woolover's on deck. As Yarbo looks at a strike. Just one away. Count evens up at one ball and one strike. We're in the seventh inning. Barcombs leads three to one. The Air Force base is a runner on first. Yarbo hits a deep ball. Randy Barcombe back to the fence. Makes the catch. Oh Hill, no tag. Yarbo set that ball a deep left center field. Randy Barcombe went back nicely and the ball makes the catch. Now the last hope for the Air Force base, he represents a tying run, be their left, left fielder, 
Jerry Wolover. He's got the power to poke it out, huh? This guy. So well, his home run that he hit against uh, Beaumont early in the year was at OLVA field. So it's a so gapper. They, yes. But on this park here, anybody with any kind of a pop to the bat, you can send the ball out of this park. Count evens up at one ball and one strike. Two down in the top of the seventh inning and a runner on first. Potential tying run at the plate. Hits a ground ball. A Huxby over to Underwood. Gets by him. Well over. Taking a chance by going to second on that play. I'll tell you what, I never would have went to second there. He represents a tying run, but he took an awful gamble by going to second. Well, uh, it's two errors this inning for Barcombs and a mental error out in the left field, lights, right field, I would say, on Bill Bayshore. He should have been backing up that. He was uh, standing out in his position yep, out there, not backing right up that play. Backing up that play at first base. So the tying runs at second base. Potential lead run at the plate. At the plate, the first baseman, Bill Duckett. And we know Duckett is line two right back to Lombard. It's an easy ground ball to Hoxby. Hoxby over to Laporte. They got it, and that's the ball game. As Barcom, Stevie, and Furniture, they overcome two errors in the seventh inning. And they win three to one. And that sets up a second game for tomorrow evening. That's Tuesday evening, because we'll be showing this That's game Tuesday on Tuesday evening. and Wednesday. And I believe they play at OLVA Field tomorrow evening at 6.30. As the other matchups, it'll be the Press and Lucas at 9 o'clock. Rigsby's and Corneen's, the 7.45 game. And Bomart and Big Brother at 6.30 at South Acres. We just might so, see you here then. The final score, Barcombe TV and Furniture 3, Plattsburgh Air Force Base 1. This is Dog Schneider wishing you a good evening and good softballing. We'll see you later. You didn't say softball fever. Catch softball it. fever, I'm glad you reminded me. Softball fever, catch it. Thank you, Dog. Thank you for being with us. Yeah.